story that started with a naked man's balls on my neck. <laughs> How are we going to turn this into a trilogy? Um, so it was so crazy, the fact that we're making a third one. Um, but at the same time, I would make eight of them because Todd's an incredible director. I mean, he kind of is the best at what he does. Um, and, uh, and Zach and Ed are, you know, they're, just, they're incredible. So um, for me, it was a no-brainer. In the beginning of three, you, you basically are finding these guys in the aftermath of two, which is Ed's now, Stu is now married, and it is in real time. So that we shot that movie a year or two years ago, and it's been two years. And, uh, you know, Phil has a couple more kids. <laughs> uh, uh, but Alan is, he's in dire straits. His father just passed away, and you see that in the beginning of the movie. And now that that anchor's gone, um, he was unleashed as it was, but now it's almost uh, un, 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 unharnessable. For a fan, for a true fan of the first one especially, the third one is like a... a uh, an investigation of every moment of the first one uh, and dissecting it and elaborating it and, and, and shining a light on all these very s little things that, you know, you, we glance by in the first one. This one to me feels almost like the first one, the, the shooting of it. It feels like we have an amazing script, but we're all so loose with it. And a lot of in-between moments are filled with a lot of humor, I think, that, uh, that Zach and Ed come up with. The collaboration is working on such a, a communal level, more, the, more so than the first and second one, which felt very communal. But we definitely, there was always a sharing of jokes and a sharing of ways to do things. Uh, but now it's even more, now it's done without any, any, <laughs> any uh, poly tests at all. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it's almost like, why don't you just do it this way? Or uh, we'll say to each other without saying like, I'm sorry, but what if now it's just, everybody just says exactly like, do you think maybe try this? And it's wonderful. I mean, there's just so much love and respect and comfort that it almost feels like we're all telling the story together. And there is no just Alan, you know, or, or Stu or Phil um, without Todd, Zach, me and Ed which is a very fun thing to be a part of the other characters' work as well. Oh my gosh, yeah, Ken Jeong has a major, major part of this third movie. And, uh, you know, the lovers of, Ken Je of Mr. Chow are going to get their fill. Um, and, the, and, and so they should because, you know, in the first two movies, he was like the most popular character and, and people love him. And uh, it's great to see him and Ken get such an opportunity in this one to really just sort of, uh, you know, take it to another level. This movie now is like we're back and we've taken all of those things and it's rugged and brutal and massive. I mean, there's parachutes, you know, flying around Vegas at night. There are huge animals in small automobiles. There are, there are a lot of crazy things going on and it all is kind of grounded. Um, but the cool thing is I don't think it ever comes from a place where Todd and Craig Mazin thought, let's outdo the second and first one. It is sort of a self-contained unit of let's just tell a good story. The ones that have lived on and had a legacy to me always come from a specific place and point of view. That I know for sure this movie has because it all comes from Todd Phillips' point of view, which is very specific and, uh, and personal. And I think that's where the best stories are born from. We just have an insane and ridiculous and candidly unfair amount of fun working together and making these movies. So when the prospect of another one came up, it was just, it, if, this, if the script is there, if the story feels legit, hell yes, let's absolutely do this. I realized that, that it's just as important to find the people that you really enjoy working with and that make your day-to-day -day experience a positive, and exciting and fun experience. Um, and that's what we have, that's what we all found, and I think that's why it was so easy to pull the trigger on on number three for, for everyone. That said, we're also people who take this craft very seriously and wanted to make sure that creatively it was in the right place and the right thing to do creatively before we jumped on, but, um, but you know, the script was there and and Todd is just a, he's like, he's our captain. You know, we just follow him into battle. And uh, he's a hell of a captain. 
In three, we have this kind of wonderful uh, new story that pulls all this this seemingly random information and uh, circumstance from one and two and builds this really cool new narrative area that we're in for three. And, uh, and I think that's really cool. We start with Married Stew and Hangover 3. And Married Stew is a little cooler than, I think, Stu from 1 and 2. His wife is clearly a kind of beautiful, sophisticated woman who has kind of upped his game a little bit. He's a little more fashionable. He's got a better style to him. Um, you know, the things that typically happen to schlubs who marry uh, better women than they are. Alan's in a little bit of trouble and the guys need to help him out. And what starts out as a fairly kind of magnanimous gesture uh, just snowballs into utter chaos and hell. Much more so than one or two, if that's possible. I mean, look, I'm I'm a, I've been a part of this thing from day one. I'm also a fan of this thing. I love the stories and I love these characters and and I was just excited to read Hangover 3 as hopefully fans will be to watch it. And I had that same experience of like turning pages like, no way, are you kidding me? Where did that come from? And uh, I just, I, I'm really thrilled at some of the exciting things that got injected. What's really cool about Todd is that he, if something's not working, and if something's not awesome, we, we will stop. It doesn't matter how big the production is that day, how many moving parts there are, how many background extras, cars, whatever, he'll stop. And we'll go off and we'll work on it. And we'll just work on the lines. And we'll make sure it's there and we'll get there. And now, you know, four years in, on, now that we're shooting Hangover 3, we all know each other's strengths and we know how each other thinks and how each other talks and, and our, our cadences. And we can pitch lines for each other and we can come up with lines. I can come up with a line for Alan. Bradley can come up with a line for me. And, and, uh, and there's no pride. At, at, there's no room for it. Everybody's just sort of open to uh, a real collaborative machine. And Todd to his credit, really facilitates that. And, and, um, and what I really admire about Todd is that he won't move on unless it's awesome. Like we won't, we won't shoot something. Well, he'll cut, like we'll stop a scene and schedule it for another day, which we've done a handful of times in a major production, it's a big deal because he wants to get it right. And, I, and that makes us all feel so much more comfortable and excited, like we know we're gonna put the work in to get it right. Um, and it's uh, it's it's demanding, but incredibly gratifying and a hell of a lot of fun. Alan is having some kind of um midlife crisis if he were to live to 120 <laughs> the midlife alan's 60 years old looks good um but he, he alan's having kind of a midlife crisis even though he doesn't really know it he's have to he has to be told he's having a, a crisis the story for the third one starts basically something kind of um happens to alan's life he kind of has a a meltdown. He's also not been the most responsible adult. There is a um, people are concerned and they try to help Alan, and uh, that's how the movie starts. Um, helping Alan, nice and innocent. Let's drive him somewhere. Then this Chow guy gets. Uh, he's back from the, the the I don't know from the east. <laughs> It's neat. It's neat to be acting with John Goodman. Who wouldn't want to be acting with John Goodman?
And he's funny, and I like him. He's a giggler. We went to dinner, and he giggled a lot, which I tend to do. And I like that in a grown man. And he's very grown. These movies are always physical. Todd has always had physical. I've done this is my fourth movie with him. It's always a lot of physicality. Um, car chases, fights, gunshots. Um, and that kind of stuff is, is fun because you're, you know, you're a grown man and you're living in a little fantasy world and you get to drive in a car down the highway when there's no one around and it's, it's neat <laughs> to bring back that word. It is, it's fun. I mean, when you're a kid and you're thinking about, oh, I'd like to be in movies and stuff. I've known Ken since, God, the 90, probably 97. We would, we would do stand-up together in coffee shops in, uh, down in Culver City. And uh, so it's, 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 you know, we didn't think we'd ever end up in a movie, to be honest, the way we were going back then, uh, especially together. But so that's nice. It's a nice element, an old pal that you get to act with. And I knew Bradley and Ed. Uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of like a, an old bickering family. Uh, but bickering with love. I think when you watch it, it's kind of like flipping through a, literally with this movie, uh, through a photo album. And it's fun to, to, to see. You know, I probably won't watch the movies for years, but one day it'll be fun to like stumble upon it or, or, or it does. It brings good memories back. It really does. I love the jokes in this one. We got some good jokes coming your way. And, uh, there's some pretty good, um, high octane action stuff. Um, and there's also emotion in this one. So I think it has, uh, it has a lot of, uh, you know, what you want to go see. You want to get a few laughs. You want to see a car crash. Is that your thing? <laughs> and, you know, you get a couple of, uh, tear jerkers here and there. Maybe if it's done right. Do they just assume that you're going to go hang from 68 feet or whatever it was? And um, no net. I mean, there's a harness, obviously. I, it's completely safe, but your irrational mind, my irrational mind tells me that uh, something... All I'm thinking about is earthquakes when I'm up there. Because that, there's, if an earthquake happens, there's, um, there's nothing you can do. And you think somebody's going to be there to... They're all going to scramble <laughs> to get out. <laughs> you think people are going to go... Yeah, they would be just dangling if I was lucky enough to survive the earthquake and that nothing happened with the thing, you know. It would be me, and this is where my mind goes, I'm just telling you, me at, at an empty stage uh, while, while Armageddon's having dangling from 60 feet. No cell reception. <laughs> so ah, problems. I have so much fun doing the Hangover movies because it's my favorite film crew to work with, you know? Like, I love Todd and I love, and Larry the DP. I mean, we're all, like, family, and, you know, not to mention Bradley, Ed, Zach, Justin, you know? And so, uh, it, to me, it's, it's, it's like working with really good friends, and it, 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 we all have, like, a shorthand of communication. We, you know, we, we all get each other, you know? And we all work well with each other, and it's such a good chemistry. I love the fact that you know it's not it's not a, another forgotten night. It's not another bachelor party. It really is its own movie in terms of like having a very very unique pace and sense of narrative, and which is great because you don't have um, you don't know what to expect. I think this movie to me it deals with the consequences of the first two movies, you know, and also. And also inverting some of the narrative. It just there's just great twists and turns that go along this way. I always think of Todd Phillips, you know, his movies and that narrative of like, like you're on a roller coaster and you just, oh my, look at these trees. Oh wow, this ah! like that to me is like a Todd Phillips, you know, is is amazing. I look at Chow as a great <laughs> device for mayhem, you know, and and. One thing I, I, I have in common with Todd is like, we, we, you know, we both love our mayhem. We've all been on the same page of just like making it as good as possible because, you know, we owe it 
to ourselves. We owe it to the fans, you know, to make this the best. You know, and that's what I love about going the third time around. No one's phoning this in. Everyone is well, – we have the same – kind of hunger that we did in the first movie, just trying to make it as good as possible. It's like, it's like flying Elvises, just, just, just like, just landing on the strip. And, um, to, to me, uh, it, it, it's the greatest spectacle you, you can see there when you're going through the Bellagio and timing the fountains just right to, you know, it, who does that? We do, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those things where it's so surreal that even I'm, I'm still grasping, like, is this really happening right now?